Okay, let's talk about the uh, Junior Outfitter. Uh, building a fire this morning is a little cool. It's uh, in the 50s, so it's not the coolest morning yet, but I'm going to cook a, uh, a stew, I think, today. Going to rest the fingers. <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm all bloodied up, and nicked here and there, hands are sore, so I'm going to rest the hands today and... <clears throat> See if they can't heal up. The um, main thing is, is when I get tired and when I'm grinding, I uh, I hit my fingertips in the grinder belts. <laughs> That's not a fun experience, trust me. So um, we're gonna rest the hands today, and and I'm gonna cook a stew and and uh, enjoy the day by fire. You see the fire pit, it's a Fireside Outdoor, turn it over here, that's a um, mobile or portable fire pit. It has a carbon fiber thing that you lay down on the bottom of it, it's silver, I don't know if it's carbon fiber or what, but it's fireproof. But since I got gravel out here on my patio, it don't matter, really matter. But um, anyway, um, this is the same one that Primal Outdoors uses quite a bit. He loves it, so I thought maybe I'd give it a shot, give it a try and uh, see how that works. But uh, anyway, all right, back to the knife. Um, about a, a week or two maybe now at this point, I was doing some, uh, some the knives for uh, Stitch Gear Outfitters and they have the Outfitter. It's one of their proprietary designs. And um, if you don't know what that knife is, then I'll put a link at the end of this video of what the, uh, the Outfitter is. Basically, in a nutshell, I took the Cansball uh, Mora and, in my opinion, enhanced it, made it better, better steel, better grinds, um, just curves, better curves. And that's where the outfitter came from. I've always, um, multi-grinds has always fascinated me for the past six, seven years uh, I've been doing multi-grinds. So, and the Cansball was part of that because I saw that knife and, and I said, wow, what a concept, you know, this could go somewhere. Because I never understood why you had the same grind all the way through when you use the knife in different areas for different tasks. So why not have a certain area here for your, your wood processing, your carving, your things like that that you do on camp, and then have the tip for food prep, um, game processing, kitchen stuff, um, the finer task, the slicing part, or you need the wedge here, you need the slicing part at the tip. That's the concept for a multi-grind or a dual grind. So, um, the fire's getting it now. You see it there? Enjoy my fire while I talk. <laughs> um, so that's, that's where the multi-grind came from. So anyway, I was doing the outfitter for uh, Stitch Gear. And uh, don't pay attention to the dogs. They do it constantly, 24 hours a day. They never sleep. They never sleep, I'm serious. So anyway, they, um, so I was doing the outfitters for, um, for stitch gear and, and I said, man, I love that grind. What if, what if we do some little tweaks here and there, thinner steel, um, do a little bit shorter blade, same curves on the grind, but maybe drop the tip a little bit because the outfitter is a straight back skinner like the cans ball is. So, this is the Junior Outfitter was born. Has the same grind as the Outfitter. It's just a shorter blade. It's a four inch blade. Handle is about four inches. So it's about an eight and a half inch uh, overall, uh, eighth inch steel. Um, and I, I put a little bit thinner handles on mine so I can put it in my pocket. I like it to carry in my pocket. Um, because I mean, when you're grinding and stuff and you have a knife on your belt, dust, grit, and everything else gets in your sheath and it just constantly scratches the blade and it, it grinds your blade every time you take it in and out of the sheath. <laughs> so I've started putting them in my pocket, which uh, helps out quite a bit. But anyway, I, I have really thoroughly enjoyed this knife for the past two weeks. And um, so we're gonna do a stew here in a moment and um, we're gonna slice some vegetables and things like that. And, and uh, just kind of give you guys an idea of the concept behind it, okay? So stick with me. It's going to get fun, I uh, hope. 
And I hope we'll have a tasty stew at the end of the day. So there you go, the Junior Outfitter. You can get these at stitchgear.com. You can pre-order them now, okay? So stick with me. Well, I'm waiting for the fire to die down. Just kind of give you an idea of how, how well it carves. See those fine curls? There's a lot of control. Then right here at that scandy part, I mean, it just bites into the wood. I mean, it'll, it'll hog off some wood. And this is uh, seasoned either pin oak or red oak. Looks more like pin oak to me. But I've been very impressed with it as far as the multi-uses. And that's, that's what a multi-grind, its purpose is, is a, a uh, multi-faceted knife that does a lot, lot more tests well. Whereas uh, a lot of the specialty knives, they're just good at one thing. I'm trying for versatility, multi-grinds. And then you get it right there at that, that sweet spot. It just kind of holds the material right there until it slices it off. So. I've really been enjoying this knife. I really have. Uh, it's a little early to tell. But um, I told Randy the other day that I may have another favorite knife. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. That um, uh, I, it's going to be hard to hard to put aside that uh, that master craftsman though, because man, I just love that knife. <laughs> but this one, this one is has been very impressive. It really has. It's just the right length, I think, right weight. This is really a, a hunter's hunter's dream knife for the um, whitetail and smaller game, I think. You wanna know what handle this is? This is a Coyote Sure Touch with orange scales and uh, pins. And again, this is thinner material than um, uh, what um, is typically on them. Uh, we're going to take some to, uh, I'll be at Wanamaker's next week. Well, by the time you see this video, probably this week. It'll be the weekend of the 11th, 12th, 13th. Be at the Wanamaker show with Randy. Be at his booth. I don't know what area we're at, but I'm sure if you get one of the little brochures, it'll tell you where we're at. Um, I'll be there with him uh, all three days. I guess it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, and I will have um, some of these with me. I, have, I think four, I think, I made for the show. Matter of fact, let me go get them. I'll show you what they look like. Okay, here's one in, in orange. Sure touch with uh, lime liners and pins. It's a real beefy handle. So if you like big handles, then that's it. I just hadn't put the lanyards in. But there's a hole for the lanyard. Needs to be cleaned up and finished up, polished. And here's one with uh, just green sure touch, no liner, black pen. That's gonna be at the show again. It will have a lanyard. Uh, and this one is a new type of handle. Well, I say new, it's been around a while, but uh, it's um, fire hose material, micarta with black liner and black pen. It's a real beefy handle. So if you like a large handle on small knives, then this is your ticket. Then here's one with a standard uh, brown micarta or natural. It'll go brown. Um, and uh, all of these are in AEBL stainless steel. Uh, in addition to that, we're gonna have some mountain jacks there, some um, um, mountaineers. And I've got some minis I got four minis that I'm going to uh, take that we uh, set aside for the show. 
um, see that's a lime green or neon green sure touch with orange pins and orange liners kind of different I got one with green sure touch red pins red liners again they need to be polished up and finished up but and of course there'll be lanyards they all have lanyards here's a gray one a gray sure touch with blue pins blue liners again that'll be all sealed up and polished up Then there's the Coyote uh, Sure Touch again with the orange pins and orange liners. Okay, so we're going to have quite a bit of assortment there at uh, at the show. So be sure and stop by and uh, and say hello. Anyway, I'll have some caps there. Um, some I don't know if they're going to be this color or not, but we have an assortment of caps there. I got one that's patriotic. It's red, white, and blue. So stop in there and say hello and get you a cap or a sticker at least and. Uh, It'd be, be good to, to just chat with you a moment. So, anyway. All right, we're going to let our fire die down a little bit more, and we're going to start getting our stew on, so stick with me. Maybe a long video, but that's all right. I ain't done any, one of these videos in a while. and So, we're just relaxing today. Saving the fingers. All right, I got some beef uh, skirt steak here. Gonna just kind of... Cube it up best we can. We'll make a beef stew. We're gonna let the meat cook and get it tender <clears throat> for about, I don't know, we'll see how long it takes to um, get it tender. Then we'll add the veggies about an hour before it's ready. that water warm up and we'll put warm cold water in a hot cast iron pot that's never a good idea okay we got some black pepper garlic powder sea salt and curry put that in there Put some minced garlic in there too. And I never measure anything. Just do it to taste. Don't like a whole lot of salt. Not good for mom's high blood pressure. About a teaspoon. And we'll put all of that curry in there. Whatever that is. 
what, about three or four teaspoons. Okay, we're going to do some veggies. I'm going to slice up some onions. I don't want to get them too small. The onion chunks will be chunky style. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna rinse them off and uh, put them in the pot. All right, I thought I had the camera on, but it didn't. There's the taters and the onions in the stew. I got some carrots. We're gonna wait on the carrots a little while. The baby carrots. So they're already pretty tender. I'm gonna stoke the fire back up a little bit. Oh yeah, we are bubbling now. I think I'm gonna put uh, a little bit of gravy mix in it. Cause um, I'm gonna thicken it up a bit. It's just brown gravy mix. Could just do a mix of flour and water and my cornstarch and water, but.
This has got some seasoning in it, so it ought to be good. Okay, um, this is the first time I've used the Fireside Outdoor Pop-Up Pit. And um, I see how it'd be a great item to for a campfire, you know, if you're in a park or something. I like the height when you're cooking because you don't have to bend over a fire. I like that. What I don't like about it is because it gets air underneath it doesn't get a bit of coals. So, um, I mean, if you're going to cook steaks or something like that on it, it just doesn't provide a good coal bed um, for a cooking fire. Um, but something like this, it does all right. Um, it's bigger than, than my... Um, a little fire pit. Um, I forget what the, what it's called. It's um, Snow Peak Fire Pit. I think is what it's called. Cause it's expensive. It's like three hundred bucks. <laughs> this one, I forget what it was, but it was I think a hundred bucks, maybe maybe a hundred bucks. It's very cheap, but it's a nice thing. It rolls up in a little roll. You know, just about a six inch by by eighteen inch roll. Um, and when you add the little fire grill that I've got there that I set the Dutch oven on, um, you would want one without the legs. The Dutch oven without the legs would be better. But I mean, as far as a grill, I got that on Amazon. It's just a folding grill. I think it's one foot by 18 inches or something like that. Folding grill, stainless steel. So, I mean, it would do the trick. It would, it would get the job done. It's just if you want a bed of coals to, to cook on, that would not be your best option. But uh, just my thoughts on it so far. Uh, again, for the price, you can't beat it. Um, I think it's worth throwing in the truck or in your camp gear. And um, It's big enough that you can have a, a good, decent fire in it. Um, the uh, Snow Peak uh, is pretty small for something like that, but it's great for cooking with a small fire. So anyway. Just my thoughts. We'll let the stew continue to bubble boiling and uh, and the cook. Well, it's smelling good. <laughs> you can smell that. <laughs> it's gonna be good. So anyway, we'll get back to you in a little bit. All right, I think it's about ready. I added uh, some a can of uh, whole kernel corn drained and the carrots about uh, 20 minutes ago 30 minutes ago something like that starting to thick up a little bit something out in a plate let it start cooling a little bit see that be hot <laughs> it's hot well you smell the curry I love curry carrots are done now well, meat's tender Man, that's good. And the taters. Oh, yeah. It's a hot, can't hardly eat it right now, but man. And let it sit there for a few minutes, let that seasoning soak all in there. It's good now, but it's going to be good or better later. <laughs> good or better later. Oh, man. 
Ain't nothing like a good pot of stew on a cool day. That's nice. All right, thank you for joining me on this. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And um, if you ever, if you're in Tulsa next weekend, uh, the weekend of the 11th and 12th, be sure and stop in at the Wanamaker. Um, I think it's at the Civic Center. They're in Tulsa. And uh, come by the booth, the Stitch Gear uh, booth. You'll see banners up and everything. It's got WC knives and Stitch Gear outfitters on it. And uh, stop by and say hello. And uh, don't forget to check out the, the Junior Outfitter that uh, you can pre-order now through uh, Stitch Gear Outfitters if you can't get to the show. Then be sure and, and contact Randy and tell him that you want on the pre-order list for the, for the Junior Outfitter. Um, there it is right there. It's basically a drop point, a small drop point with a four inch blade. It has a multi-grind, it has a Scandi, a curved Scandi into a saber that has that deep belly for skinning and, and butchering task. So it's it's uh, one of those uh, multi-grinds that's for the outdoorsman. The woodsman uh, does a little bit of uh, camp craft, fire craft, and um, uh, skinning chores. Um, as you see through this video that it does kitchen prep very well. Fills them taters and slices them onions very easy. So anyway, the Junior Outfitter. Um, until the next one, you guys get in the backyard, whittle on a stick, be sure and take a child with you, get the opportunity. And don't forget those plenty of band-aids and lots of knives. We'll catch you again very soon.